I tried every convenience store fried chicken in Japan during my quest for the best. And today, we're going to make it better. This video is also sponsored by Kluke, but more on them at the end. Now, because I'm trying to be a good chef, I had my sous chef prepare all of the chicken we need to deep fry. I like to treat this somewhat like a restaurant, where I have some people prep things ahead of time, so this way I can cook everything when I need to for service. This is the chicken breast meat that we're going to need for the karage-kun, and this is my marinated karage that we're going to be using for our 7-Eleven style fried chicken. Now I did make my sous chef arrive pretty early in the day to get everything started and luckily he had all of his mise en place ready to go. He's starting off with two big chicken breasts and some chicken thighs. The first thing he needs to do is make the marinade for the karage which is going to be the chicken thigh. He's chopping up just a bit of ginger, getting that nice and chopped, putting it into a container and then taking two whole cloves of garlic and giving those a nice Hulk smash. The next aromatic is going to be some whole white onion. He's just using about a half an onion giving that a rough chop and popping it into the container. Once all of that's ready to go, he's taking about a pound of chicken thigh and placing it directly on top of the aromatics in that container. Next is one to two tablespoons of soy sauce, around two tablespoons of rice vinegar, two tablespoons of mirin. He's giving that a toss to make sure everything is well coated. But this isn't quite done because that marinade doesn't come up enough to cover everything. He sprinkles a bit of salt on top and then adds some water to help cover all of the protein with the marinade. He's pressing this down to make sure that it's completely submerged, throws a lid on it, and this has to marinate for around half an hour, but it is better to go for around four hours or overnight. Once that's done, it's time to make the karage kun. Bro, you don't get breaks right now. What are you doing? We probably paid for that coffee. He has to slice up this chicken breast just a little bit, so this way it'll fit into the blender later. These chicken breasts were pretty big, so you may not have to go through this step, but it does make it easier for when you go to put this into your blender. Alternatively, you can cut all of this up by hand, or you can just buy ground chicken breast and make it really easy on yourself. In this case, we're putting everything into the blender, followed by one whole egg that you really don't have to crack this way. I don't know why he decided to do it with one hand, but do whatever you want. A good pinch of salt, a little bit of soy sauce, and some cracked black pepper. This is also getting a bit of panko breadcrumb just to hold everything together. He blends this on high until everything gets nice and emulsified into these really gooey balls of mess. This gets put back into a container, and because this chicken meat was a little sticky, he had to add a touch more panko breadcrumb to really start absorbing some of those liquids so it is easier to form when we go to deep fry these. This sits in the fridge for another half an hour before we get to use it and it will be ready for chef to come and start frying some stuff. You see, the sous chefs are the ones who make everything happen. Honestly, I don't know what I would do without him. You're the best. I love my sous chefs. Now because the 7-Eleven style chicken won't take too long, I'm actually going to start portioning out karage-kun. I absolutely loved this version of it because it was like eating really good chicken nuggets. I don't know why I walked over there. I need a spoon from over here. All I need is my chicken mixture that my sous chef had prepped earlier and a bunch of panko breadcrumbs. I'm gonna start off with half just in case I don't need everything so I don't have to waste any. Breadcrumbs get seasoned with a bit of salt and some fresh cracked black pepper. Give us a nice toss. And if you really want to, you can taste the breadcrumbs right now. And if it has a nice seasoned flavor to it, you're good to go. Otherwise, add more. That's good. Now you can see why I had my sous chef prepare this ahead of time. Earlier, it was really, really wet and hard to work with, but now that it's sat for about an hour, this is really nice and we can actually mold this into our little chicken balls. Why would I say that? <clears throat> This is a professional kitchen. I'm going to try to evenly portion each of these out to maybe, I don't know, two ounces each, but that's realistically what you want them to look like. Nice height, nice chunkiness to them, and that's pretty much it. Give these a quick little roll to make sure they're nice and tight. Drop it into the breadcrumb and just kind of toss it around a little bit. Once it's in the breadcrumb, I do like to press it again. And there is our karage-kun. Place this right there. I'm going to repeat the process for each and every one of these, trying to keep them as even as possible. And if they're a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, it's going to be okay. I was able to get about nine karage kun balls out of this. Admittedly, they're a little bit big, but that's okay. We like our protein. Now, because I am one smart cookie, I had my oil for deep frying heating up ahead of time. But you see that right back there, that air fryer in the corner? These are delicious in the air fryer. The only thing you would need to do is put in a little bit of oil into the breadcrumb and they fry up so nicely in the air fryer. But because we are making the best version of Japanese karage, we have to do 
fried. I like to make sure that my oil is around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is actually a little hot, but that's okay because once we put in the chicken, it will cool down a little bit. The biggest reason is because these are pretty thick and if you have them too thick, they won't fry up evenly. The outside will be far too cooked before the inside is. So we're just gonna go, you know, we're gonna go with everything. I am shallow frying these versus deep frying. So this way I don't have to use a ton of oil. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Now these are probably going to fry for about seven to eight minutes. You wanna make sure that the outside is nice and golden brown and the inside is fully cooked. This is why you don't want it to be too hot, otherwise it will get too brown without cooking that inside. Now after around five minutes, these look like they're ready to go. They're nice and golden brown. I'm gonna remove these and place them onto this wire rack to not only cool down because they're extremely hot, but also to drain any excess oil because you really don't wanna eat any of that. Oh, these look so good. If you want a macro friendly version, put these in the air fryer. Fryer. Seriously, air fryer, macro friendly, I, what else do you want? This is what they look like. I'm gonna leave these, not where Gandalf can get them. We're gonna put them back here, just to cool down while we fry up the second one. Now what's interesting is that this version is actually an entire chicken cutlet. And in this case, it is the chicken thigh. This goes into a combination, half part cornstarch or potato starch and half part flour. The cornstarch and potato starch can get it super, super crispy and the flour can actually help protect the chicken while it cooks. I did also season this mixture ahead of time with just a pinch of salt, but no pepper this time. Now this bad boy, once it's all dredged, goes right into the oil. I'm gonna dredge the second one right away so this way they cook around the same time. Oh God, I have to get this in the oil. Hold on. Oh God, cleanup mission. No, Gandalf, don't eat the flour. Gandalf, no, don't eat that. Your poops are gonna be like little projectiles. I have my oil around the same temperature, around 325, and we're just gonna cook these until these are beautifully golden and then cool them down before we bite into them. The one problem is that with this style of chicken in particular, you can't throw this in the air fryer. The potato starch and flour actually doesn't work that well in the air fryer compared to the breadcrumbs. But you could take this chicken with the marinade and do an egg wash station and then cover it in breadcrumb and then throw that into the air fryer. It's a great solution if you don't wanna deep fry anything. After about two minutes, I'm going to flip the chicken. This will need another flip because it's not completely done, but I'm mostly doing this so this way I can get that flour and that cornstarch to set. This still has to go for a few more minutes, so I'm gonna come back and we're gonna see this done. And there, my friends, our chicken is done. This has been cooking for about eight minutes. This is nice and golden looking. Yes, there's some stuff on it from the bottom of the pan, but we won't talk about that. And I'm gonna be doing the same thing where I take the chicken off of here and put it onto my sheet tray to cool down and drain any excess oil. I would highly recommend you let this cool down till probably the next day, just keep it lightly covered. So this way you don't have anything get into it. You can strain this and use it again. And there, my friends, are beautiful full fried chicken. Our 7-Eleven version and the Karage-kun version. The Karage-kun was actually from Lawson's and I did love having it. 7-Eleven chicken though was the clear winner in my video where I taste tested all of the fried chicken in Japan. I'm gonna be diving into the Karage-kun first. Cheers. Look at the filling. Look at that. It's seasoned really well. You get a hint of soy sauce, not too much, but it is kind of there. But the chicken itself isn't dry at all, which is really nice, especially for chicken breast. And that's why you need to add the egg into the mixture. Chicken breast can naturally get really dry when cooked, so adding in things like egg does help quite a bit. This is just as good as I remember. Cheers to 7-Eleven. Oh, oh God, oh God, it's hot. Oh, oh, it's hot. Look at that, beautifully juicy, still super tender. You can taste a little bit of the rice wine vinegar, a little bit of the mirin, a little bit of the soy sauce. Some of the aromatics come through like the onions and the garlic and ginger. This is delightful. Mm. But still, I have one big problem with the ultimate Japanese fried chicken. Is it delicious? Yes, but this did take about two and a half hours to make. It also cost about $30 to put together. My local grocery store only had chicken in the most giant packaging, so this may differ for you. And is the experience of eating this better than the experience of having this on the streets of Tokyo after having a couple of drinks in front of a 7-Eleven? No. 
$2 karage-kun or 7-Eleven fried chicken on the street when you really want it or the homemade version. I have arguments for both, I agree. I can make a bunch of this and it'll actually be cheaper in the long run, but I loved that atmosphere and that feeling. And you can get that same exact thing with today's sponsor, Kluke. Kluke is actually an experience-based booking platform for places all over the world, but I used it for Japan. They reached out to me asking if I would like to talk about Kluke, and they didn't know that I actually used Kluke to book my bullet trains for Tokyo. When we were planning our trip out there, we weren't too sure how to get bullet train tickets. We didn't want to get them on the spot because neither my wife and I speak Japanese, and that's when we found Kluke. Once you book online, they send you a QR code that you then take to the train station teller, they scan it, and you have your ticket. This saved us so much time because sometimes those lines for the bullet trains get really long. On top of that, their prices literally can't be beat. They were cheaper than getting them from the train station. Not only can you easily book all of your train tickets through Kluke, but you can also book entire experiences through them as well. One experience that I wish we could have gone to was Universal Studios in Osaka. The biggest reason why we didn't go is because we didn't have tickets ahead of time. Had I known that Kluke offered those tickets, we would have easily booked on the spot and then gone to Universal Studios. It's incredibly easy to to use the Kluke app to book any of your travel directly in the country. So that means if you're already in Japan, you can still use Kluke to book anything that you need. This makes it incredibly easy if you're traveling around and aren't too familiar with any of the Japanese language. I'm personally going to be using Kluke every single time I need to travel throughout Japan, and you can do the same thing using my link down below. Make sure you download the Kluke app and start traveling today in the easiest way possible. So head down to my link below and check out Kluke right now. As for this, it's is it the ultimate fried chicken ever, as many people would claim? It depends. I'd rather have mine on the streets of Tokyo, but this is pretty good. My name is Chef PK, and remember, keep playing with your food.